SpaceX Starship Updates and Perseverance Getting Ready for Mars My name is Felix and I am your host for today's episode of What About It. And as always there has been a lot going on in the space industry lately, so let's take right off. Starship Updates We've seen a lot of testing recently and we're only getting started as it seems. SpaceX is right now testing one Starship, finishing up with another one, having a third one already started and a new test stand is already in the works too. The crew in Boca Chica is now moving faster and faster. And they keep going and going at an ever increasing speed. Right now, if I had the time for it, I could get out a Starship update every day. So here we go, what's new in Boca Chica? After finishing the two static fires last week, workers have taken Raptor Serial Number 18 out of Starship Serial Number 4 and moved it back to the construction site, likely for inspections. SpaceX wants to know how the engine did, what the wear and tear looks like and if there is anything wrong with it. This is part of the tests and makes sure that these engines actually are ready for flight action. And we got a really good look at the engine again from Mary's fantastic pictures. Again, thank you so much Mary. This is absolutely fantastic. Here you can see the letters ESN, likely standing for engineering sample number. We can see methane and LOX intakes. It's fascinating to see how complex these Raptor engines are. Right after taking out the engine though, workers assembled and installed the hydraulic press again. Those who watch the progress in Boca Chica on a regular basis know what this means. It's cryogenic time again. Since on the first pressure test series with serial number 4, SpaceX did not go up to the full 8.6 bars, but instead kept it at a much safer 4.5, they might want to see if serial number 4 can go all the way. And so they started their next round of cryogenic testing on Friday night. It was the typical picture. The road got closed, the pad cleared and venting occurred. Some condensate formed on upper and lower tank as well, but that's it. It might have been another room temperature test. Besides some very impressive fuel farm venting, nothing else happened. There was a thunderstorm approaching the site and winds picked up quite a bit as well. So it could be that SpaceX decided that the weather was not favorable enough to continue. The next day though, everything went just as planned. We were able to witness something very special. A full cryogenic test run through without any hiccups. Starship serial number 4 got filled up all the way with liquid nitrogen. A thick ice crust formed on the outside signaling extreme cold. And the stainless steel outer hull passed the test. Musk confirmed on Twitter that serial number 4 passed the pressure test with 7.5 bar and engine thrust load at cryogenic temperatures. This opens the path for longer static fires and finally a 150 meter flight test. And the new Raptor has moved to the launch site already. Raptor serial number 20 this time. 18 seems to have done its job and SpaceX might want data from another test candidate. It's likely that Raptor SN20 will also be the one to perform the 150 meter hop. There still is no date yet, but that shouldn't take long anymore. We're all set now. Just a quick update while we're still at the test site, remember the large flare stack spitting out methane while the static fire tests were going on? Here's your solution. SpaceX will take it down in a few weeks, replacing it with a solar-powered methane condenser. No more flare stack, no more issues. Just one example of constant improvements at the Boca Chica facility. Meanwhile at the construction site at the high bay a lot has happened as well. Serial number 5 is ready for stacking and should be prepared for testing in just a few days now. This marks the second Starship to be almost ready for testing at the same time serial number 4 is still at the launch site being actively tested. I want to tackle a rather difficult topic here, but a needed one in my opinion. There have been tons of speculations out there on what's happening while the static fires are going on. Lots of speculation and educated guesses to maybe get a little bit more understanding into what's actually happening on these static fire tests. So here's my speculative take on the procedure leading up to a Starship static fire. The first sign of a test in progress is a vent on the long LOX or LN2 tank. My idea here is that they are chilling the fill pipes and we are seeing the gas vent out the other end. Then fueling begins. Most people are looking for frost, but there is a telltale vent one and three quarter rings down from the top. It equalizes pressure in the methane tank with small discharges. 
This is the first sign for fueling to be underway. This happens 45 to 32 minutes to ignition. So it's not a fixed time in the procedure. Next up we have condensate and then frost forming on the outside. Note the gap in the frost 3.5 rings down and how it gets smaller as things cool off. Venting now also starts at the LOX tank 4 rings down from the top. This whole process takes around 30 minutes. Then the 10 minutes siren goes and it's fairly accurate. And then 9 minutes later at T minus 1 minute the flare goes wild. Vents are being closed along the line and so the flare has to ensure excess methane is burned off. And finally at T minus 0 the static fire happens. This of course is a very rough outline of the observable process. Somewhere in this timeline are pressure checks, engine chill and maybe even a TVC check. It's not observable though when precisely these events occur so I did not list them. Last but not least the testing will continue. We have closure dates every day right now as you can see here. All of these dates are potential static fires so SpaceX provides the proper amount of entertainment right now. If you want to get more info about SpaceX's Starship development, details about what exactly they are doing and lots and lots of other interesting insights into Blue Origin, NASA, Rocket Lab and many other launch providers and their rockets, I suggest you check out my quickly growing library of episodes. Here you can find tons of content about reusable rockets, SLS, the Artemis program and anything else space related. While you're at it, do not forget to hit the like button wherever you see it and please do subscribe if you have not done so yet. This shows the YouTube algorithm that you appreciate my work and in return enables me to make more content for you. Thank you. This is it, static fire testing on a SpaceX Starship prototype. Next time you watch a live stream, you'll be able to know in advance what's happening next. Perseverance getting ready for Mars. Now let's take a moment to look at another absolutely stunning mission that's on the final stretch before launch right now. NASA's next rover for the Red Planet is almost ready for launch now and it's only a bit more than two months away. The 2020 rover, or Perseverance as it's recently been named, is an incredible piece of hardware. With a width of 2.7 meters and a length of 3 meters and a total weight of 1025 kilograms, it's a heavy weight. It's 17% heavier than its predecessor Curiosity, only coming in at 899 kilograms. Different science instruments, 23 cameras, most in color and two microphones. Perseverance has different wheels, an upgraded instrument arm, the ability to store sample caches from its drill for later retrieval. The rover's power supply, a radioisotope thermoelectric generator, provides power for 14 years of mission duration. Unlike solar panels, the 45 kg generator provides much more flexibility, enabling scientists to use the instruments at day and at night. Equipped with an X-ray spectrometer, a radar imager, a very accurate Mars weather station, an ISRU oxygen generator for tests, the SuperCam, which is a fancy name for an instrument suit able to analyze rocks from a distance, a stereo camera with zoom capability and Sherlock, a super sensitive spectrometer capable of detecting organic material. Also, Perseverance is the first rover to have a companion with it. Ingenuity. It is a solar powered helicopter that will be able to scout for the rover. It will be the first time a human made probe will attempt powered flight in another planet's atmosphere. It weighs in at only 1.8 kilograms. Besides cameras, it has no other scientific instruments and its main jobs will be to demonstrate the practicability of flight on Mars and to scout the best driving path for Perseverance. Its test is supposed to last for 30 days with up to 5 flights lasting only about 3 minutes each. I wouldn't be surprised though if the hardware works for longer. Since it's a technology demonstrator though, the mission will be a success after those 30 days. In December of last year the rover performed test drives, showing off its new wheels. These wheels are quite different from those found on Curiosity. Early on in the mission of the current rover, NASA found out that there was a flawed design in Curiosity's wheels. They couldn't cope with rocky surfaces very well and got holes over time. Tested extensively in Mars environment simulators, NASA made very sure to test every possible situation on Earth before sending the rover to our red neighbor. And even on descent down to the Martian surface, Perseverance will do a few things different compared to Curiosity. 
While descending through the Martian atmosphere, the lander will take pictures of the surface, comparing it to stored images from orbit. So it will do real-time terrain relative navigation and be aware of where it sets down the rover. Mars 2020 will also use something called Range Trigger to set the rover down much closer to its scientific target than possible on earlier missions. This will shave off some precious time for the commute towards the target area. And while going down through the Martian atmosphere, the lander will do something absolutely fantastic. It will film its complete descent towards the surface and have microphones working. So for the first time, we will get good quality video, including sound from the landing. Not in real time, of course, but shortly after the landing has happened. No one has ever seen a parachute opening in the Martian atmosphere or the rover being lowered down to the surface on a tether from the descent stage being cut off and the descent stage then flying away. This will be absolutely incredible footage and we can see it in less than a year. Perseverance is set to launch no earlier than July 17th on top of an Atlas V 541 rocket from Launch Complex 41 at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. And it will land on February 18th of 2021 near Jezero Crater, its scientific target. NASA engineers have already started putting the rover into the launch configuration. It'll be in for the ride from Earth to the Red Planet. The process, called vehicle stacking, began on April 23rd. On April 29th, the rover and descent stage were then attached to the cone-shaped back shell which contains the parachute and, along with the mission's heat shield, provides protection for the rover and the descent stage during Martian atmospheric entry. Perseverance is a big budget science mission. It will search for signs of ancient microbial life, characterize the planet's climate and geology, collect samples for future return missions and pave the way for human exploration of the red planet. I cannot wait for it to take off later this year. 2020 already is an absolutely stunning year for space fans and it is going to hold a few more mega events for us in the coming months. So this wraps up today's episode of What About It. Will we see a 150 meter hop this month and what's your favorite Mars mission so far? As always, tell me in the comments. And here we are again at the end of the episode thanking YouTube members and patrons for their ongoing support. More and more like-minded rocket enthusiasts are gathering on our Discord and it's absolutely amazing how much support the channel is getting. They give ideas, funding and research for all of what you just saw. More than 20 minutes of information packed content every week and none of it possible without them. So show your love for them in the comments and maybe even consider becoming one yourself. And as always, there are new members on the team. Everyone, please give a warm welcome to Alan Thompson, Darren Bradley, Jim Elliott, David Bennett, Mike Wanzong and many others. You rock! And on we go with a shout out to the team. Comprised of people from all around the world and of all trades, these people are pitching in so much time that they are considered part of the production team. Constantly helping, researching, animating and organizing, they are the grease that keeps the rover going. This time a special shout out goes to Mike aka Warhawk for his sharp research provided to today's episode. You people rock! Thank you for watching this episode of What About It and now would be the appropriate time to hit the like button, subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell button to actually receive a notification when I do my uploads. It's a version of support that doesn't cost a penny and it does help me to produce more and better content. And if you do want to spend your money, consider becoming a patron and get insights into the production of What About It and chat with me on the Discord. Or you could buy yourself a new shirt on our merchandise store and look like me. There are plenty original designs available in good quality for a low price made by a space nerd for other space nerds. It all helps me to give you the latest and greatest about space and science. I hope to see you on the next episode. Until then, have a great time. We've seen a lot of testing recently and we... Um, yeah. Go fly away, fly away. Distant stage, fly away. Two weeks. No, month. <laughs> the nose cone. <laughs> Perseverance is a bitch. <laughs>